They're so happy they're indoors. There's heat. They're indoors. Yes. Oh. Had a bad, we've had a bad week. We've hit the dawn, as we all know here, of the, the Seattle winter. We're at the very beginning of it, where everything is getting, and people, we're, we're, get, we're taking on that look, that people are getting that look on their faces. That, that, like they're a bunch of depressed Scandinavians in a Bergman film. It's just like, you know, it's like that. It's like the rest of the year that, of course, is confined to Ballard, but now it's everywhere. You know, it's just like, the time, the time of year that separates the natives from the transplants, and this is the time of the year. Actually, you know, all the transplants complain about how horribly Seattle natives drive around this time of year. Just like, ah, da, 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 here in Chicago. Da, da. The natives ignore that talk, and they quietly and stoically drive. Horribly. <laughs> Horribly. We are the worst. It's true. <laughs> People are not as mellow this time of year, if you notice. They're, they actually become willing to spend the rest of their life in a maximum security prison if the person in front of them won't pull away the instant the light turns green. I don't care. I'm going to prison. I don't care. Good. Got to it was so bad, so rainy some days this week that uh, Jeff Renner's Doppler radar, it just started giving off very strange readings. Do we have some? Look, look at this. There's the radar, and look, watch the radar sweep come through here. Look at that. Now that's just... Something. There's a, a bug in the system somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Jeff's not going to be happy about that. Anyway, I... Uh, this is the time when uh, everybody stops being Northwest healthy also. It's just the, uh, the herbal tea and scones are, go right out the window and people break out the cigarettes and donuts that are down there and it's like, we don't care anymore. Don't care. Don't care. And now there's, there's a dent in the snooze button because people, they don't want to, they don't want to wake up and hear the traffic report. It's just, oh my God. In fact, some people, they'll take drastic measures to stay off the roads. I mean, take a look. It's just awful. It's a huge delay. Both bridges are backed up. It's a parking lot on I-90. 520 has an injury accident and the Renton escorts, they are at a standstill. There's water all over the factory interchange. I-5 is backed up to the bus barn. And, oh, the South Center Hill, it's just awful. If you don't need to be out today, you stay home. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I never get tired of clips from Reefer Madness. Are you just like, yeah, we can use them for anything here. It's a comedy standby. Put in the Reefer. Anyway, I have to say, though, that the, the traffic reporters do get a little dramatic at times. You listen to the, like, 520's been backed up so long, they're starting to practice human cannibalism. It's horrible. Move on. It does get kind of bad. So anyway, we're here to cheer you up, you know, and I think that the best thing for when you're down in the dumps is some nice music, and we have got just the record for you. Now, for the first time in music history, legendary pop singer Bobby Tangle brings you this amazing musical offer. It's Bobby Tangle sings the great movie classic instrumentals. <laughs> Yes, it's the exciting Bobby Tango, as you've never heard him before. You'll be spellbound as Bobby Tango performs both parts of dueling banjos. And Bobby tugs at your heartstrings when he sings songs of inspiration. Dun 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 Yes, the inimitable Bobby Tango performs all your favorite classic movie instrumentals, including the electrifying Axel Foley theme from Beverly Hills Cop. And modern classics like Pulp Fiction. Gun, Planet of the Apes, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, Battle for the Planet of the Apes, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, and Yentl. Order now and receive Bobby Tango Sings the Beatles in Pig Latin. Hey, UJ, don't make it at bay. 
take an ad, say, on, say, and make it Edder Bay. It's the fabulous Bobby Tango. Buy it today. So you need a bag with that or anything? Did you see these guys live last week at, at the Croc? Man, I heard this concert really ripped. Did you see them? My roommate lived with a bass player before he yeah. went into rehab. Lived with a bass. Hey, do you want one of our frequent piercing cards or? No? No? You cool? cool. Okay. Okay, cool. see ya. Cool. This is so great working in this store. Yeah, I know. I know. Everybody here is so cool. You know, it's really cool. You know, um, you're, you're looking cool. Thanks. Your hair is cool. Thanks. Thanks. I love this music. Yeah. Um, can I can I make a confession? Uh, I I don't really like this music. Really? Yeah. In fact, I hate it. Yeah. I mean, I just play it because the manager wants me to. What I really like is classic rock. Wow. Me too. I like Aerosmith and Led Zeppelin. No, I, I thought it was just me. Oh man, you see, I, I mostly listen to old sticks in Boston. Yeah. Actually, my favorites are Aria Speedwagon and Toto. Oh man, <laughs> me too, me too. Can I tell you something? Remember how I said that I follow a strict vegetarian macrobiotic diet? I, I just said that because you said it. Actually, I eat a little chicken sometimes. Oh, me too. I just said that I was macrobiotic because I thought you'd like. I mean, I eat chicken and I eat fish. <laughs> me too. <laughs> and I eat bacon and sausages. But I love eating pigs. Oh. I, I, I can eat a pig every day. Me too. <laughs> I mean, you know, I hunted and killed an elk last year, and I, I mean, I ate the whole thing, even the liver. Uh, wow. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, remember how I said I was way into animal rights? Well. I have some leather shoes. <laughs> I've got some leather stuff too. Actually, you know, I, I think that animal rights activists are kind of stupid. <laughs> if I see a dog in the street, a lot of the times, I'll just kick it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, and then I shoot it with my BB gun. <laughs> I have a raccoon caged up in back. <laughs> Me too. And another thing, okay, remember how I said that like, everybody should love each other and learn to get along? Well, foreigners scare me. Really? Yeah. I mean, they're all like, oh, I speak a different language than you. I mean, it's creepy. Yeah, you know? I think that all people different from me are weird and frightening. I think all non-citizens should be tracked by the government. Yeah. I think they should be kept in pens like wild beasts. I believe all foreign nationals on U.S. soil should be pressed into slavery to serve our every wicked, perverted desire. <laughs> I regularly call for the violent overthrow of the government of the United States of America. I've got a trunk, lo trunk load of pipe bombs in my car. I'm scheduled to become a government cyborg. The perfect killing machine? Yeah. Me too! Oh. <laughs> you know what? You know, this, this pierce isn't real. This isn't my hair. <laughs> <laughs> this is a prosthetic leg. Oh. <laughs> I'm not really a man. Wow, this is so weird. You know, here I thought I'd met an alternative rock-listening, macrobiotic, animal rights activist, open-minded, non-cyborg woman, when in fact you're a crappy music-listening, animal-killing, right-wing, narrow-minded, cyborg man. Yeah. It's wild. Gosh, you know, I like you. You're so real. <laughs> Me too. Oh. Hey, all right. Yo, that's a great disc, man. Are you going to see these guys live? Or It's time for People, Fascinating People. Hi, and welcome to Fascinating People. And today we're going to meet Buck Carlson. He is the proprietor of Carlson Cement, where for over 40 years their motto has been, no job too big 
or too small. Mr. Carlson, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Mr. Carlson, what I wanted to ask you... Carlson Cement, no job too big or too small. No, that's too small. No, it's too small, I tell you. Lady, how am I supposed to do a job that small? I could never afford to do a job that... Okay, yeah, you do that. Bye. That's uh, fascinating. It sounds like she actually had a job that was too small for it. We get idiots calling like that every day. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to ask you, Mr. Cross... Okay, sounds like you got another call coming in there. Carlson Cement, no job too big or too small. No, that's too big. No, what did I just tell you? It's too big. No, it's... Are you listening? It's too big. It's too... Too big! Yeah, you do that. That one was too big, big wasn't it? Yeah. Uh... Mr. Carlson, what, what do you like the best about the cement business? I mean, if you had to, you know, pick one thing that you like the best about. I guess uh, it'd be the cement. The cement. Okay, that, that makes sense. So be, uh, sure. Uh, what's the thing you like the least? The customers. Cement customers have got to be the dumbest people on the planet. I wanted to ask you a question about your motto back there. Okay. Carlson Cement, no job too big or too small. No, that's too small. No, it's way too small. Yeah, what's the other job? No, that one's too big. No, it's way too... Listen, it's just me and my lazy son Arnold here. How in the world are we supposed to do a job that big? Come on, think! Boy, look at that. The time has uh, just flown. Thanks a lot. Hope you'll join us next time on Fascinating People. That was no interview. What, where are you going? That was too short. That was no interview. Come on. Carlson Cement, no job too big or too small. Oh, for crying out loud, come on! <laughs>well jenny dilby recently celebrated her 20th year as the space needle elevator operator even though she gets motion sickness and has a tremendous fear of heights jenny says she has escorted guests up and down the elevator over 75,000 times and never gets tired of saying those familiar words oh my god we're all gonna die <laughs> Boeing won a $1.1 billion Air Force contract this week to develop laser-armed military jets that officials say will revolutionize combat in the 21st century. A Boeing spokesperson said it's nice to know that there will continue to be conflict, terrorism, and war in the next century, and that we're excited that Boeing will be a part of it. <laughs> A Seattle public relations executive says he was sprayed twice with, an her with a herbicide from a helicopter as he was hunting in the Hanford Reach area. He says the experience was pretty unpleasant, but he no longer suffers from aphids. <laughs> the town of Orting is testing several different warning systems to prepare for the inevitable eruption of Mount Rainier. The most popular alarm so far has turned out to be the Barry White Early Warning System. <laughs> I believe we have a demonstration tape of it, of that right now. It's gonna blow. <laughs>
When Hansen was asked how she could blame her eyesight for using the card so many different times and in different states, she responded, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I have poor hearing. <laughs> A gargoyle clock is being installed in Fremont, which will include 24 gar gargoyles who all shout lunch in unison at 12 noon every day. At 12 midnight, they'll all shout, turn off the Indian folk music and go to bed. <laughs> Finally, Ernst Home Centers have announced that they will be selling all their stores and going out of business. If you're interested in buying the chain, good luck on getting someone to wait on you. It's been the late report. Don't go away. This is Viewpoint on the Issues. A candid discussion of today's news. Now, here is moderator, Harry Fitzman. Good evening, and joining me, as usual, is Bernard Dixon, columnist for the Post-Intelligencer, Gretchen Trackleby, KSTW political reporter, and former city councilman and Burlwood table maker, Jack Frampton. <laughs> well, thank you all very much. Uh, a lot of news this week. Uh, the much-anticipated two-for-one stock split of yeah. Microsoft happened. Bernard, what does that mean? Well, basically, Harry, it means that all shareholders will receive one extra share for every share that they now own. In other words, it's two shares for one proposition. All right, understood. But now, Gretchen, what does that mean uh, in terms of the stock prices? Actually, that's a good question, Harry. Uh, it means that the stock's price is going to drop by half. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, Gretchen. Oh. Uh, yes, Jack? Why would a shareholder want to see their uh, price stock cut in half? Uh, you know, I think I could probably answer that one. Hey, excuse me, Bernard. Uh, it's not your turn. It's her turn. Uh, thank you, Harry. Sure. Well, the split doubles the number of shares that an investor owns. It's a very attractive thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, you know, aren't the share prices only worth, you know, half as much? I, you know, I guess I don't really understand. Well, you know, certainly that's probably true at first. However, well, you what to... you're saying is that the stock price is expected to climb again then. Exactly. Uh -huh. Well, I still think it sounds risky. Uh, we're over here, uh, Jack. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Well, when we return, we'll look at the rising price tag of the proposed Mariner Stadium. And I know you've got some thoughts about that, Gretchen. I certainly do. Yeah. So do I. Me too. Okay, so stay with us. We'll return after this break. Well, thanks for joining us tonight, and if you'd like to join us here in the studio, just call live, 421-5555 for tickets, and some of tonight's studio audience are going to get to see, they're going to get tickets to see Hootie and the Blowfish at the Tacoma Dome next Sunday. Eight o'clock presented by Bill Graham Presents. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Marine say, an L O Y of Marine say, an L O Y of Marine say. <laughs>